How many times? You've been on the podcast probably the most out of anyone. Like, that's probably like my third time. Because we did our one-on-one, then we did one with like a big group of us. Yeah, this is your third time. I've never had someone on three times. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's 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 special. Look at you, unofficial co-host of the Shooting Cars <laughs> podcast. Hell yeah. I never like thought the, you'd be getting that bad. I'm like the regulars on like the podcast. You know, like I watch a bunch of podcasts and whenever you get those regulars. Yeah. Like, they're fun. Yeah. It's all boring then though. Because there's not any stuff to talk about. Is, it, is this John's first time on this the podcast? This is John's first time. Really? This is John's podcast, co-hosted by Jim Jim. Yeah, sorry. I kind of intruded. No, but, you're good. Welcome to the podcast, bud. Thank you. I'm going to take my water bottle off the table because it's probably popping right in the microphone. We don't like that. What do you mean popping? Like the pressure changes. It's bit, you know, if I we want to do like ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> ASMR, ASMR podcast. Yeah. I just love ASMR. I love it too. Really? Yeah, You're you an ASMR guy? It? I like ASMR. Whoa. Thank you. I do versus ASMR, dude. You d- yeah, he made the engine ASMR video. <clears throat> yeah, all right. I mean, that's low key ASMR, but yeah. yeah. It's mean, not titled key. ASMR. Hey, don't call like, it low key. No that was a work of art. No one's supposed to. It's not supposed to be known that it's ASMR, but you're supposed to watch it and be like, like yeah. this is like ASMR. See, one time Audrey yeah. put. I was like, just like falling asleep. Audrey put ASMR in my ears just yeah. to see how I like it. I was like, oh god, no, I hate it. I hate <laughs> really? It. Dude. I feel like there's something behind me, like crackling oh, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I know I, what you're talking about. Up until up until probably halfway through quarantine, for like the year, two years before that, I slept to it every single night. Yeah. So Audrey yeah. does a lot. It, it's just like white noise. I don't like the whispering stuff. Because I used to, like, wake up in the middle of the night. And oh, like, that's oh, so really bad. Who's and I was bad? like, in yeah. my, my room, I have to have it, like, super dark. Uh-huh. Or else I can't sleep. And, like, I was, like, freaking out. Yeah. And then one time, I, I have the fender from my Red RX-7 in my room. And I, what did I, I put, like, a sweatshirt on it because I didn't have a place oh, for it. Bad Dude, it things. got me so oh, bad. Man. Dude, you know what the solution that I found is? What? Uh, whenever I watch ASMR to go to sleep. I just don't use earbuds. I just listen to it on my phone because it has like stereo speakers, right? It has like this one. Oh, this yeah, one. yeah. So, like, I still get some of the stereo experience, like binaural or whatever. But then, like, when I'm ready to actually go to sleep, go to sleep, I just set it on the pillow next to me and I just I just go to sleep listening yeah. to the background. I discovered Spotify, so they're starting to do spot uh, uh, podcasts. Mm-hmm. They've got this cool feature where you can set it to turn off at a certain amount of time. Uh, so, like, if you know you're about to fall oh, asleep like to a, a podcast, timer? yeah, you can turn it on for, like, an hour, ten minutes, five minutes, which is pretty cool. I like that. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about, like, Spotify for things other than music. I like it for podcasts. Yeah. It's really awesome. And, like, I... You can find so this podcast on there. Joe Rogan... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, so, like, Joe Rogan was only on YouTube, and I hated it because whenever I watched it, I wanted to lock my phone, and then if you lock your phone, it stops the video. Cause it's on YouTube. Unless if you have that, pre- well, premium or whatever. Who pays for it? Um, I think, personally, I think the three of us should get it for free. Um, I know. YouTube Premium. Weird. I mean, we make them a decent Yeah, that's actually kind of whack. I didn't think about that. Why don't right, we? Right, like, yeah. We well, also, it. if we're making that much money, why is $5 an issue? But I mean, it's a courtesy thing. Yeah. It's a courtesy thing, you know? Sure. I mean, we're, we're, we're making their revenue, you know, give us some benefits. Exactly. We, we need benefits. It's just five dollars, YouTube. Come on. Yeah. What the heck? YouTube. But yeah, Spotify is nice because you can lock it and it keeps playing. Yeah. So. That I never thought of that because like I'll be like cooking in the kitchen or something, and I'll like go lock my phone and then it shuts off and I'm like. I know. I can't tell you how many times I'm, I like I go check my phone, lock it, walk away. I'm like ah, and I turn around. I'm or like, I can't yeah. tell you how many times I I'll be listening to a podcast on my phone and then I go sit down at my desk and then go search that podcast on youtube open it and like scroll to my same time point but then i go back out to work on the car so then i have to go on my phone find that time point again and like spotify is not great at that yet either okay yeah. well if anyone from spotify's list yeah. well like i was listening to my computer and then i hop in the car and listen to it and it's like yeah where i started listening to it on the computer i'm like Ugh, nah, that's what like... podcast do you listen to joe rogan mostly joe rogan yeah yeah h2h everyone's well too yeah, I don't. I don't really do podcasts. Podcasts are great for driving and I for working in the shop. Well, I just. I got I a like five-hour drive music. tomorrow. I'm just <laughs> podcasting yeah. all the way. <clears throat> Dang. It makes the five hours go like. Yeah. Because you get interested in the conversation. I don't though. I, then I, you're not listening you're to the right podcast. Right I don't care, dude. I just I'm like I don't care what you're talking. You need to talk. You need to listen to an interesting podcast. You, you need to listen to stand-up comedian. AM podcasts. radio. AM radio. <laughs> Yeah, he tried to talk to me about this. <laughs> no, like, have you ever thought joke, about right? AM radio? It's not a joke. Yeah. Have you ever thought about AM radio? Yeah. 
All right, have you ever, have you listened to AM radio in recent? I used to as a memory? kid in my grandpa's Buick. He, we used to go to garage sales. Me and my grandma. And my grandpa would drive, and he had AM radio on all the time. Have you listened to AM radio in 2020? No, why? The people on it are so passionate, bro, and they have they have no like they have no credibility because they're just people who are on AM radio just voicing opinions. But their opinions are like so deeply Weird. ingrained in who they are, yeah. and they just like voice it over the air. It's like the most ridiculous stuff. It's like you're in the Twilight Zone when you listen to AM <laughs> in 2020. I swear. You know what? I swear, is, I that, it. is it actually seriously entertaining, or do you get bored of it? It's like, entertaining because it's, just it's so crazy. Wacky. I just listen to it and I'm like, did they actually just say that? Like, it's just like the funniest stuff, dude. There was one they were talking about aliens and stuff as I'm driving, like. At nighttime, I'm driving through New York, and there's trees all around me, and they're just, like, talking about aliens and, like, all kinds of stuff, and I'm just like, bro, this is insane. Well, you know, like, like, you know the original story of War of the Worlds, right? Do you ever remember? Right, yeah, it yeah, came yeah. on the radio. It, it came on the radio, really but skit, and people thought it was news. People thought it was real, and They all yeah. jumped in their cars. Oh, really? and like, yeah, because they were like, aliens are invading. It was, uh, <laughs> it was like a radio story. Dummies. And <laughs> And they said, like, aliens are invading D.C., and people, like, jumped in their cars mm-hmm. and, like, got the heck out of there mm-hmm. wow. but fun fact about that new mazda out there i don't know how to get to the radio <laughs> i i don't know <laughs> no how to yeah. get to am FM. i just literally plug in my phone go to spotify yeah. if you that's... figure it out you gotta try it you like be I'm on gonna a road sit in the trip, parking lot today and figure it out don't dude be on a road trip at like night time yeah and put that shit on you're gonna be like you're gonna be like, where am what I? Channel? Be like, what channel? What Six? year is just, it? Sh- just scan. Just scan until you hear like either someone who's radically Republican or radically Democrat, <laughs> and just stick with that one. <laughs> Whatever it is, just stick with one of the radical like, like oh politics ones. It's so funny. How hard is it to get a job in AM FM radio right now? I, no I don't think it's really a job. I think it's like they just do it. In their free time. You know what else is <laughs> the crazy thing? They got a thing? ham radio in a bunker somewhere. Dude, you know, what Honestly. The, you know what else is the crazy thing about it? What? Like, who's recording that? Who's recording anything that they're saying? Is anyone doing it? Maybe one person somewhere is recording their that AM radio broadcast? We're going back to podcasts. But, why does AM still exist if we just have podcasts? Well, but hang on. This is what I was getting at here. It's so cool that you can sit there and listen to this person talk, and those words that you're hearing, no one will ever hear again in that exact context. Like, it's just like they say things, and the second they say it, it doesn't exist anymore. And you, you can't... What, where do I search? Like, AM radio, like, you know... December 20th, July, yeah. 20, whatever, on 2020. It's like, that doesn't exist anywhere. You know what, though? Someone did record a bunch of, like, radio commercials and stuff, just regular stuff mm-hmm. from the 90s, mm-hmm. and you can find all the files online. That's really it's, cool the best i That's literally cool. once sat there i was editing one night and just listened to 90s radio commercials you know you've done some a few uh weird asmr things yourself i have the miata, the miata next to the river the, the river man. one wait which one the where you sat with your miata next to the river watching the boats go oh by. yeah i didn't yeah, label yeah. that as asmr but no, literally no, but... i took this microphone shoved it in the sand up at the beach uh-huh. and i just sat there with my miata let me tell you do you loop it no, the sitting on the beach was not looped. How long was it? Like, like 20 minutes. Oh, okay. It was, For some reason, well, no, the, like the Miata lifter tick was eight hours. That was, sorry to burst everyone's bubble, that was a minute and 36 seconds looped. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I, didn't, got, I couldn't tell. I listened to all eight hours. No, you didn't. Yeah, attention. Like. <laughs> how, do you, how do you even do that in Premiere? Do you have to, like, to copy paste, the copy paste? Oh, and oh, honey, Google, select I don't that use Premiere. Do, oh. I use iMovie, the free software that comes on Macs. I, I've been very vocal about this. It's perfect for what I do. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah. need fancy stuff. You're getting into fancy stuff, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Do you? Like your hard cuts and like your colorization and oh, all that stuff. It, it's really good, but I don't, for my reviews, I don't need that stuff. Do you Do you know who David Dobrik is? Yes, of course. <clears throat> he actually you know, grew up he, around here, actually. Yeah, he oh, grew up in Vernon know. Hills, like yeah. Highland Park, one of those, yeah. right by my neighborhood. Uh, but I was going to say, he uses iMovie. Doug DeMiro uses iMovie. It's so clear that he uses iMovie because he uses the stock titles. <laughs> yeah. He uses the stock titles. Oh like, my I, god! I built, I, I draw out my titles in Photoshop and then bring it over to iMovie. So like the titles don't and like the graphics and stuff don't look it. But just for assembling the clips, I re, for a review, it's twenty minutes of footage. I just have to chop up. Right. So, but yeah, the Miata Lifter Tick video was looped until the end. You actually hear me shut the car off. 
I left it in the shut up. What are you, are you trying to drink that real slow? Just no, I'm just trying to eat ice, and I don't want it to be annoying. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I'm not perfect. What was I Hold saying? Crunch again. Do it again. Hold for crunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is it registering? Yeah, we're good. A little bit. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'll stop. No, that's fine. I mean, do it. Do what you want. It's a slice of life. I forgot what I was gonna say about that Miata video. Totally, totally blanked on it. I watch. Oh, watching the boats go by, sitting with my Miata was honestly the most at peace I've been in years. <laughs> I bet. I sat doesn't. there for three hours. I only recorded the twenty minutes because I had to go to a review. I was filming a review up in Arlington Heights, and then I went up to where? Where would you record that? What? What lake or river? Oh, that was the Fox River. Oh, really? In Cary, Illinois, and I so I drove like the forty minutes from Arlington to Cary. And I I had like three hours to kill in between reviews because I filmed a there's a Triumph Spitfire in the morning and then a LS swapped Volvo. That was um, what, what's the spaces Spitfire, right? Yes. Um, and I know who you're talking Will. about. Yeah. Will. Um, and I had three hours to kill, and I'm like, I'm right by the river. Like I want to try to find a spot. So I found it was literally just a regular street that just dead ended. And there was one house across from me that I don't think anyone was, like, currently living in. And I just parked, like, kind of in the grass on the other side. And I sat there for three hours. I'd, like, I barely touched my phone. And I just sat there watching boats. And it was probably the most, okay. most joy I've felt in a very <laughs> long time. <laughs> but, yeah, it was right before I, I... And then I drove that LS Swap 240, which was awesome. Um, but, John, you're on the podcast. You're on the Potty Waddy. Let's talk about it. Boosted John, YouTube channel. Give us a little intro. What, what are you all about? We know what you're about, but tell the people. I want to know you're what John about. thinks he's about. Yeah. I don't actually even know. That's yeah, funny thing. Yeah, I want to know what you like, think you're about. I don't I have some different ideas. Yeah, you know what? Uh, should I, I should I should probably try to say this first. You guys like think in your heads right now whatever you're gonna say. And I feel like we should. Like, I don't actually know what game. you're about. I'm I don't. I don't know, I don't know either, dude. Like. I just when he asked me that question when I was on, I was like, oh, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess like I just film what I do, and I I build Hondas currently. Uh, I have two Hondas. I have an EK hatch and an EG hatch. The EG hatch is like built and turbocharged, and I don't know. I just film what I do and try to make as quality of a video and as quality of a thumbnail as I possibly can. And I've been really, really working on thumbnails and titles lately. I, uh, yeah, that's I think like my pride and joy. What I really I like about you, I love my thumbnail. I love doing my thumbnails. It's like oh, my yeah. favorite thing. Well, you always send us the proof, so I always appreciate it. You're like <laughs> A, B, or C, and I'm like, I mean, they're all great. You know, it's just it's minor stuff. The the one that with the Lori Lightfoot, uh, <laughs> that, that actually did crack me up. I was like, please use that. No, but the one thing I like about your videos is that you just make the videos that you just like. Yeah. Like, you're not, like, really – you impress people, but, like, you're not, uh -huh. like, actively trying to, like, impress everyone. That you, you just make the videos that you like, and so far it's been really successful for you, which has been awesome to watch. Yeah, recently, recently, for yeah. sure. Um, the, but you're taking it more seriously now. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm yeah. just really devoting time. I have, like, a schedule that I try to stick to. I'm, like, like looking up editing. to your schedule and everything even, too. Dang. That's wow, a, that's I need to make props. Actually, you got I mean, a little channel going, right? I have a little, little channel going, that. but I do like honestly, I was don't take it as seriously as you take your channel, which is <laughs> not good, obviously. Dang. But um, you know, yeah. that's a nice compliment. Thank All right, you. so let's switch it. Why, why, why aren't you taking it so seriously? This is actually an intervention. Guys, come in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's not like I'm take not taking it seriously. I just kind of focus on the actual doing. I feel like you're you're very stuff. much in a rhythm. Yeah, but it's not a good rhythm, I don't think, necessarily. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I focus more on the actual doing of things. Like, I get to the shop, and I'm like, ah, I want to build this one thing. And then I kind of forget that I have to be filming a video, and I don't, right. and I'm not happy with the video, and then I get, don't get a thumbnail, so I'm just using a screenshot from the video. I need to take it, I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm trying to make too many vid videos a week or something. Maybe, I was going to say. I'm thinking about trying to just do one a week and just making it a banger. Basically. That's what you're doing. It For, like, my... My process, my process exists like this right now. It's like I have the weekend, um, Saturday and Sunday, to think of exactly what I want my video for Friday to be. 
during that time, I, I think you were about of, to launch that cup. By the way, you were like. <laughs> <laughs> During that time, I think of the thumbnail, and that's it. I don't really think of the title, but that wow. Saturday and Sunday, I am brainstorming the, the, the thumbnail. So that way, during the week, I can create that thumbnail for Friday. And then You're I, thinking I about work... the thumbnail for a full week. Yes. Oh yes, my God. yes, literally. So do you base the video ideas off a of thumbnail? No, I think of the video concept, and okay. then I formulate the thumbnail around that concept that I've thought of. So does the thumbnail usually come first? Because that's one of the last things I do. Yeah. The idea comes first, then, then well, it's not always the creation of the thumbnail. It's more just the thought of what I want it to be. I visualize it in my head on Saturday and Sunday. Do you sketch Sunday. it out or like do no, it off? No, I literally just visualize it. I'm like, I want this here. I want that there. I want to say this on it. Yeah. Uh, and then I... That's a great idea because I feel like I edit my video and I'm uploading it and I'm like, all right, time to make a thumbnail. Hmm, what do I want it to say? Blah, 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 blah. Well, That's good think enough. about it this way. Like, think about when you go to work on your car. Say you didn't finish what you were doing the day before and you went home, and then you're laying in bed and you're thinking about what you have to do tomorrow to fix it, to finish it. You get and you're really visualizing exactly what you're doing, right? You're yeah. like, I'm going to go there, I'm going to take off this, I'm going to unbolt this, yep. I have to unbolt this in a certain way. And then you way. don't sleep because you're like, I just want to go and do it. <laughs> well, yeah, but oh. as you visualize that process, as soon as you get to the shop the next day, you crank through it because yeah. you already have visualized what it's going to be. So, like, for me, that's how the thumbnail is. It's like Saturday, Sunday, I'm visualizing it. So then when I actually go to make it, I crank through it and I'm like, I, I have exactly what I wanted. We started this out as like a fun podcast. This is a actual constructive <laughs> workshop, I think, for all three of us. Because so, so you like how you're thinking about the thumbnail for a week? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, unless I start to make it earlier in the week, then it's like you know I thought of it on Saturday or Sunday, but maybe I started working on the thumbnail like Monday or Tuesday, and I, maybe I have the thumbnail by Tuesday done. I don't know. It just depends. Jeez. I mean, getting getting thumbnails is a lot of effort, which is why I. I've slacked on it because I'm like, I don't feel like pulling it out and getting a picture. Yeah. I used to never care about it until I realized, like, I was scrolling through my own channel of all my videos and I'm like, oh, these are, like, important. Because, like, before they watch the video, that's the only thing they know about the video mm -hmm. is the title well, and the thumbnail. It's, it's the cover of the book. So we were looking at my analytics the other day and... I don't know what the, like, so impressions is how many people see it. Right. And, like, there's a, there's a percentage of how many people see it versus how many people click it. Oh, Mine, it's, Mine's, like, well, what was it, like, 3%, which is terrible. It shows you how many people that video has popped up in their feed. You know, they're scrolling, and, like, here's Jim Jim's video, and then it shows you how many people have seen it just show up in their feed, right? And then it also shows you the percentage of people who actually clicked it. That's your click-through rate. So right. that's like if is you that see on the YouTube it. Creator app? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. On, your it's phone on the studio, too. YouTube studio. Yeah, the studio. Yeah, you can look at. I can pull it up right now. I, I want to pull up mine. Analytics. Yeah, mine's like three percent, which is bad. Which means I don't have good thumbnails. And they said like a, a video that's like a, has a chance of like becoming a viral video or like you know get a really? lot of engagement is like ten percent. Oh, is dude, it under we're discovery? All, we're all gonna pull our phones out now. No, oh, it's it's okay. Wait, is it impression click through rate? Yep, that's it. through rate. Yours is three percent. Yeah. 6.7! What's that, up, boys? Uh, which video? Is that average? Oh, this, this is, yeah, this is just average. Oh, the last 20 I'm gonna look at what, uh, what category are you under? Oh, mine's lower than yours, Zach. Mine's 5.5%. I mean, it's why is it under, is it the under Discovery? Oh, man, even, even my Rally Miata one's only 5.8%. Oh, this is gonna make you mad. Uh oh. My top, like, top search is Miata. Really? <laughs> For, for my whole channel. That's weird. That's so... Where do you see that? Oh, mine's... Right, well, maybe mine's we're, we're, maybe we should get off our phones. <laughs> mine's, mine's boosted, John. Wait. All right, but I was going to say, okay. for example, the uh, the engine assembly video that I did that was like the, like, quote-unquote, ASMR one, yeah. right? Like, super satisfying. I had an idea for that thumbnail for literally months, and I forgot is that, is that to the take one? the photo. Uh. I forgot to take the photo. I You know, I spent... I, this has 94,000 views right now. Really? That's like, Ooh, that's it wasn't awesome. the other day, it was at like 80? Yeah. Wow. It's still, yeah. That's wow. what I love. It's like going back and checking videos. You're like, some video you kind of made like a year ago, and you're like, oh, people are still what like. Dude, the what? first, the, the rally me had a 10 minute build, like, I had forgotten about it. And then I checked and it had like 2 million views. I was like, what? What? Damn. Like, that's, I wasn't paying attention. Here's the interesting thing about like your videos like that is I see them shared on Facebook all the yeah, time. Yeah, me too. And I just assume that you know that they're shared on Facebook. No. But then you're like, this has huge views. I'm like, 
yeah, I saw it like ten times this week. <laughs> it's getting annoying. <laughs> I started, I literally started filming this video right when I got back from Maine, which was in what month? It was early in the spring. It was, it was, it was the beginning of June. I filmed this, I started filming this video in the beginning of June, and I finished filming this video at like mid-July, I think. This was, was that like this year? Over a month. Yeah. Yeah. It was like over a month I was filming this video. It's been a long year, man. And I was thinking about the thumbnail the whole time, and I missed, I I didn't get the thumbnail. Well, it's still going well. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. It, it, it still worked, but I was I was like, So oh, what man. in your mind is the importance of the thumbnail? I mean, we all get that it's important, but like to you, it seems like this holy grail sort of thing. So Getting new I people, can, that's how. Yeah, and I can also say, like, I, I actually did a consultation with Social Blade, and I'm like willing to um, share all the notes that I got from that. With you, it said air. I don't know if that's a thing. Yeah, all right, it's good. It said air for a second on the screen, but then it oh, went away. Oh, okay. Well. Um, I'm totally willing to share that information with you. I have, like, four or five pages of notes in my notebook. Really? Um, yeah. I, like, I paid Social stuff. Blade to, to, like, do a consultation where they, like, analyze my channel, go through my analytics, all kinds of stuff, and tell me, like, what I should be doing differently. And I literally have four or five pages of notes that I didn't And I do you know think that actually about. helped you optimize it? I'll know in a couple. I mean, months, obviously, it's showing. Yeah. I mean, you've been doing. Re when did you do this consultation? I, it was like probably was like kind of like you started days after I started getting some. Right. So I, it's like probably not growth. from the stuff you did, but maybe no. But it might be helping. It might be. Helping. It might be helping. I mean, it, it probably won't hurt. That's so right. yeah, Most that's what of, I was saying when he first showed me the notes. It's like you don't have to do these things to be a successful YouTuber, but it might help. Yeah. It definitely helps. Like, think about, like, uh, the building of the McLaren F1. It was, like, there, every single ounce was, like, taken ounces out of the car. Pounds. Exactly. Ounces, ounces make grams. Pounds. make kilograms. I think that's Whoa. the... Uh, no, ounces whatever. make pounds. <laughs> ounces make that's pounds. That's how... Oh, there. The ND Miata, which your picture's all scrap, sh scraped up. Um, that's how they did that. Because they the if you look at the glass of an ND Miata, like the side windows, below the door level, there's holes in the glass to lighten it. Ounces make pounds. Ounces so that's pounds. that's the same philosophy. Yeah, with grams like make social grams. blade. That's the same. Stop saying whatever. That. We're Stop. over the grams pounds thing. That's like the whole. That's the whole philosophy of like what I learned from social blade is like those are the ounces. Those are the grams. You know? Yeah, and it that's is... like what I felt like I needed to start doing more. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're so gotta put in all this effort. Yeah, I mean you do put in a lot of effort. Um, in, yeah, but not necessarily stuff. to that stuff. So true. Yeah, the yeah. next thing I was gonna say that was the first thing. I, that's the only real credibility I have is because I was told that by Social Blade, who's like an analytics website. But another thing that I thought about afterwards was like, they said thumbnails are the number one most important thing, then titles, then description, then tags in that order. Tags have almost no significance anymore. Really? Yeah. yeah I don't. YouTube literally says like, don't fill out your tags. Like, it's not yeah, it doesn't I... even matter. I still, I still spent some time trying to think of good tags. So that's what Dude, social so 2000s, told me. Bro. Hey, my music taste is so two thousand, so that fits. Sure. But do you use hashtags? No, not really. I I was told hashtags help. Yeah, we, they didn't mention. How does that hashtag it? thing work? I see hashtags in videos. I don't know. You where just put it in it. the bottom of your description. Yeah. Oh, and it will like put it up top. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's weird. I feel like that's probably a good thing to start doing. I always hashtag whatever whatever vehicle hey, I'm reviewing. Can't hurt. Yeah, that's the thing. It can't, can't hurt. It can't possibly be hurting. Maybe. But um, it, sorry, can you can stop that. punting. I know. Maybe, yeah. maybe it could hurt though. Because like, How? what if what if your every other thing that you've put on that video helps your video in the algorithm, but that one thing you chose for your hashtag. Isn't how hashtags John, work. you're making this way too complicated. It is complicated, dude. It is. There's <laughs> you a lot need your own it. AM FM radio station. You might be AM right. Station. <laughs> you might just, be right. Can you imagine you just turn on your AM radio at 5 AM and John's like, the tags don't matter! <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, all right, thank you. That's it for the day. Um, all right. So um, but <laughs> Okay, hold on. But the, but the last yeah. thing I was going to say about thumbnails is like, how many times are you scrolling YouTube and you click a video before you even read the title? It's got a point. See, I don't do that very often. Really? Yeah, I do he that told me that to me, and I'm like, ah, eh, like, never. And he's like, oh. I do it all the time. I'll see a dope thumbnail that tells me everything I need to know about the video, and I'll click it a lot of the time. I, I started recently when I would do reviews. I actually put the name of the car in the thumbnail as mm -hmm. opposed to just the title. I've actually, I think that helps out a little bit. Because, like, when you look at it, it's everything you need to know in one box, not a box and a line, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. if the title is, like, a line, you only have to look at, like, one thing. 
Right. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. It, it's very interesting all the points. I have a, that. like, what do you feel about uh, variation in thumbnails? Like, I feel like you could get a roller for every single thumbnail, and every single thumbnail will be fire, but if every single thumbnail is a roller, does that get boring for people? I think that's not a think? good idea. Okay. So you think you should try to have a variety of different thumbnails, too? I think that you should have a consistent style right. in your thumbnails, but I think that you should have variation in the images on your thumbnail. Yeah. Yeah, I think my I think my review thumbnails are starting to border on. They all look pretty similar. But also... It depends on the channel, though, because right, you're that's a review channel. But also, all the cars kind of look similar, too. <laughs> like, I was like, I was looking at a super zoomed out picture of my channel, and I was mm -hmm. like... I was like looking at the cars. I'm like, they all kind of share the same shape nowadays. Yeah. But yeah, I, I get what you mean. What do you? I think I think. Let me look at your channel really quick, Zach. But I think that like you know Doug Demiro, for example, like another car review. He doesn't do anything to YouTuber. the thumbnail. Yeah, it's, it's like just literally a, screenshot. a straight screenshot. Although right. I will say, and that I, goes to so show that you don't need to do this stuff to only, be a successful. The only thing that I notice, and I personally try to do this in my own thumbnails, is I overexpose them a tad in Photoshop, I'll raise the, exp like once I'm done with the thumbnail, I'm done changing everything, I bump the exposure up a couple of notches to where it almost looks uncomfortably bright on my screen. But then when you put it on YouTube and it compresses it down to this really small thumbnail, it's like the perfect brightness. I will say, like, I purposely, like, zoom out when I'm editing a thumbnail. I'm like, oh, really? Zoom it really small. Yeah, like, I need oh, to get better at that. Good. One thing I will say is when I go to a dealership, I will try to request a car that is, like, the coolest, craziest color. That like, when I helps. drove the Stinger, they had an orange one and they had a red one. I was like, give me that bright pumpkin orange. Because I thought that would kind of help it stand out. And then no one cared about that video and I just went home. <laughs> no one cared about the Kia Stinger GTS, but the Kia Rio's at thirty five thousand views in three months. I don't know what the Kia Rio is. So the, the thing the, the I can say about like thing. Doug Demiro's thumbnails yeah. is they're all bright and they're all warmer. Uh, there's no real like big shadows in any of them. You know, they're all like very well. That's a fair point. Lit, and I think that is pretty important. Hmm. I was going to ask, what do you think about the differences of having a thumbnail that's like a close-up of like the engine, or like a thumbnail? Like, that's what I always struggle with. I have no idea, because yeah. the one thumbnail that I have that's a close-up of my engine Did is really the well. most successful video that I've had yeah. recently. I just feel like engine bays are so busy. Yeah. Like, that when lot. you put it onto yeah. a thumbnail, it's like you're looking at so the, much. I know. And that's so. why sometimes you like outline stuff, and that's yeah. why... Outlining stuff, I think, is popular. I really like your thumbnails of like when there's like a blurry thing in the back. Yeah, those are cool too. But do I they, like those do they as well. Work that well, no. Well, they're not really. That, <laughs> they're also like not really that interesting of topics True. either. Like so, this one's doing a little better. Are you just making noise over there? I just like. You need to. I like fidget messing those spinner. things. I do need a fidget spinner. I like fidgeting, which is why my nails are. My, I, I fuck my nails up. I mean, it's totally. Just, All right, it's time to stop. It is. <laughs> it's time to stop. Um. Yeah, no, I definitely need to, I don't know, I, th I think I need to keep, I need to spruce something up in my review thumbnails. I think I might try the, the exposure thing. Try brightening them and making, are you using a vignette? Because it kind of looked like you're a vignette. Maybe yes. don't vignette it. You think? Yeah. Because I, I try to draw focus to the car because I'm usually out on the track which has like trees and a blur, stop sign. Blur behind. the background blur. instead. Do you have Photoshop? I, Do you yeah, know who I think yeah, does really yeah. good thumbnails is Hoonigan. Their thumbnails are, I think, really. Are let me see. Yeah, I think they're pretty good. I want you to judge that. Because I think they're pretty... I like how we've fire. just turned to, to John as like a... I have genius. almost I know. no credibility. I have 15,000 yeah. subs. <laughs> it's true. I have no, 550. <laughs> your channel's been growing a lot. It's been really fun to watch. And I, I always appreciate it when we have a, a group chat and you send the, the proofs in. And like, it's it's good stuff. And I'm I like, can never tell if that's annoying or not. I feel bad because... I don't know if these people are going to be related to what we're talking about. But. Oh, yeah. we're It's a little bit of inside baseball right now, yeah. but I feel like we're kind of pulling the curtain back. We have a like group chat the... on Instagram, and we send all kinds of stuff in there, asking each other advice on things like, oh, I did this to my car. Oh, I want to do this to my car. Oh, I have this thumbnail, that thumbnail. And just, we kind of just like, use it as a feedback one. group. I, yeah, I've, uh, never, I've never thought that you were annoying. Okay. If, if, Is it annoying? No. All right. That's we good. all do. I, I don't want it That's, to sound like oh look, every this time thing I hear I from you, I John, to be... I get happy. That's you know good. what? I don't hear from you enough. I yeah. feel like you don't pass enough. Uh, you know. You know. I think I. I also group... do feel like I may be annoying if I what? do that. No. 
Like, yeah, I don't want it to seem like, oh, look at this thing I made. I want it to be more, like, legit. Dude, like, well, if what? you don't like something about it, just tell me. It's not going to hurt my feelings because I want it to be the best thing it can possibly be. I'm also mostly too lazy to make two different thumbnails, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember one time you texted me. What was it? It, it, you you like me? You, yeah, you texted me or messaged me on say? the side, and you were like, "I want you to specifically tell me what I can do better." Oh yeah, I said that to all I, of you guys. I, yeah, I know, but I yeah. like really appreciated that you were like going out of your way. And dude, I think you employed some of the things. And I think it's really helping. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was talking Definitely. about like the quality of the quantity, and you're definitely doing that. Yeah, that, and you also were saying like, um, make market your videos more to appeal to people who aren't your current subscribers, because it's yeah. like. The people who are subscribed to me are subscribed to me for me. Yeah, they're going to like it anyway. Doing. Yeah. Like, they're already sold. So, like, yeah, that sounded bad, but I don't mean it like they're sold. I mean, like, they're they're in it, you know. They, yeah, they they've already, what I mean. yeah. They're, they're, they're going to watch it. that video. commitment. Yeah. Exactly. And now it's a matter it, of, like, getting showing people. the other people what I do. And even I have to do that better, too. I think that everyone can to an extent. Yeah. Anyway, I want to see this Hoonigan. Oh, break. yeah. The Hoonigan thumbnails are insane. Yeah. These yeah. thumbnails Aren't they just are all like fire. They're absolute bangers. Yeah. Okay. Good. They're well, all bangers. Glad I, uh, yeah. Dude, like, they're, they I all, don't know. Yeah, like, 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 oh, are they using so a fisheye? Are they literally photoshopping the A car lot of it is photoshopping. It? Like, you think these cars aren't actually parked like no, this? No, no. Most of them are. But, like, I'm trying to find an example. Go to go to the one of the other channel Hoonigan channels. I don't know what the. All right, give me, give me, give me. All right we should not do this. <laughs> I know, I know. Let's Sorry. do this Sorry, later. Guys. All right, let's do this later. Um. Yeah, no, I. I'm gonna start looking at my thumbnails now and trying to fix because. I, I agree with you. It's all about getting new people, and that's like what I. That's actually the whole reason I started doing reviews, is because I was I had this Mazda content. And I'm like, all right, that's good, but like, what if someone? I was thinking about this, like take any car what if someone loves crown vicks they love crown victorias the 4.6 liter really gets them off in the morning <laughs> like you in know the what morning? there's people out there by the <laughs> way the there's definitely people oh, out there, there is. Like that. but but like up until you know a while ago i didn't have it i wouldn't have a video for them now i do you know what i mean like if i do a review of one now there's at least one video on my channel that they can kind of resonate with yeah and i think now i have i've reviewed most manufacturers a lot of different cars, a lot of different eras. I'm going to beat the shit out of you if you keep... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, Sorry. No. <laughs> uh, but now, like, okay, actually, uh, tomorrow, I have a Volkswagen... This will already be out. Uh, I have a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia video coming out, Ooh, which is the air cool 1974. And it's yeah. like no seams, right? Yeah, no seams. I seam. saw one of those at Target the other day, and I was Guy like, actually lives right in the area. Daily drives at 230,000 miles on this car. Damn. Looks brand new. Damn. Anyway, I've never driven an air-cooled vehicle. So anyone who's, like, diehard about air-cooled fans, or, like, air-cooled, like, cars, they've never had a reason to come to my channel until now. Now they have one reason. And if maybe it's only it will ever be one reason. That's why I try to do unique builds and, like, why I try to do, like, when yeah. I got the RX-7, I was like, oh, Rudy, he's going to increase my channel. Didn't really work. You know what, though? <laughs> Even your current comment section, people miss the rotary. It's so weird. It, I feel like your RX-7 wasn't appreciated until it was gone. Yeah. I feel like once you got rid true. of it, everyone was like... People were pissed when I got rid of it. But then I got a truck, and the truck has been a significantly better move. Which, I sent opinion. you that truck to buy. And I, know, I was like, dude, hey, man, this is, this is your rotary swap. This is your rotary swap. And you're and like, yeah. <laughs> and then you bought it, and you're like, I'm putting a V8 in the rotary. And I was like, no! <laughs> I sent it to you to rotary swap. And, like, rotaries always bolt into those trucks, too. Damn. Yeah, actually, so the four-wheel drive, apparently, is easier to bolt a rotary Damn. into. And a four-wheel drive rotary pickup? But imagine if you like we had a huge horsepower, make it like a drag car. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that would have been pretty cool. That would have been pretty. Cool. <laughs> I always need you do? ideas. You made a mismatch of a, of a and vehicle. And it's still pretty cool. It, no, it's cool. I'm not saying it's not okay. cool. I'm just saying it would have been cooler if it was a rotary. rotary Dress lock, kind of a lot better than that. Volvo drag build. No. Ooh, three rotor twin turbo. You know, honestly, I could still change what engine I put in there. Ooh. Yeah, it's really good. Nah, I'd know if you go with a rotor, rotor though, you're gonna 20, have to 24. ask for more money. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, uh, oh, a so short funny. block twenty B is uh, seven grand with nothing on it. Yeah, and that's just the housings and 
yeah. and irons. So Dang. good that luck nice. with that. A fully built motor is probably like ten to fifteen. I'll stick with my current K- engine K24? choice. K twenty four. K twenty four. No. K twenty four. No. I would, still, like, I would still have to build it to get the power level I want. Yeah, you would. Yeah, I'm trying to keep my motor stock, so I don't have to oh. spend six grand. Oh, on really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Are you allowed to say what motor you're going with or no? Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm I'll, I'll eight move. people are gonna see this. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't want to say. Yeah, we love anymore. all eight of you. Okay? Yeah, we all eight of you are great, you. but it's only eight of you. <laughs> if we could get two more, we'd have almost a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do an OS. Like a 5.3 or like a 6.2? So I was originally going to do a 5.3, but I want to do a manual. So I have to do a 5.3 with a T56. T56 by themselves on eBay are like 3500 bucks. Did you look into the Colorado transmission? That's the one that I drove. Had yeah, the, uh, I did not. But I could look into that. That might be a good good option. But yeah, my tax. You t- don't t- read <laughs> into them, but you know, at least... T- <laughs> T56s are so expensive. Are they really? Yeah. Like thirty five hundred dollars just for a T fifty six on eBay, yeah. What? And the motor's five hundred bucks, so I can spend four grand for a five three of a T fifty six, or I can spend five grand for an LS one with a T fifty six. Or you could pay three hundred bucks and have my whole Pontiac G six, and you can just put the EcoTech into it <laughs> That's and right. spend the rest of the money boosting it. Thanks for the effort. Oh, yeah, right. you know what? <laughs> I could get a I could get a one UZ. I, I thought about that, but I was like, I don't want to. I already did the one. If you do a one UZ, you will solidify yourself as the one UZ guy. But I'm that's not, I don't, do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't no, do it. I'm not LS, saying that's a good LS. thing. I'm saying if I like, did a one UZ, I would at least do the non VVTI one so I could boost it to the moon. Is that one VVTI? Yeah. And you can't boost it to the moon? It's got smaller rods. Oh. Yeah. The, the non VVTI can make like 700 wheel on the stock bottom end. Completely I think you should do like one of those Ford, uh, what is it, the Barra motor? Oh, the, gosh. The straight six? All right, now we're getting into like 20 grand for a motor. Yeah, Are they I really that the, expensive? I think the They're aftermarket not... support in the States is pretty rough for the yeah, yeah, to do fair. it a little bit. That's fair. Yeah. That's, uh, what that's about, a, I'm trying to think of what else would be a cool swap. LS. I'm doing an LS. That's what I'm doing, Zach. Coyote 5 Sorry, man. Coyote. All right, well, I don't have 20 grand for a motor, guys. 5 O's are, <laughs> eh. Why don't you do like, like an old stop. Like, M3 motor? It's time to stop. Like That'd be kind of cool, but what is also it, the S55 expensive. Or something? See, the yeah, LS say... is just so easy. It's just gonna. I only have two months to do this, the to do this thing, so it's, it's okay. Just don't worry about it, guys. It's gonna be fast. It's gonna be fast. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be faster gonna than be your fun. your cars. That's for sure. My car is on jack stand. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Literally, like I'm faster than your car. Yeah, really. technically, right now. <laughs> my yeah. Feet. Yeah. That was good looking, though. Oh. I have to say. That's that's. I can agree with that. <laughs> um. But let's get back to your video. I mean, like, so how did you get into cars? I mean, I... This no, is no, 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 I know, I know, wanna, I know, I know. You know. How did I get into cars? How, yeah, how did you get into cars? So Why are we for speed underground one? Oh, with the orange skyline on the cover? Was that so, a skyline? Hot Pursuit 2. Uh, Eclipse, I think. Hot Pursuit 2! I was just listening to that intro song the other day. With the Ferrari and the Lambo work. Anyway. Need for Speed Underground 1. That's interesting. Yeah, underground 1. Yeah, that that was that was what did it, and it's like all tuners and stuff. And like back then, you know, my dad is like a guy who who does not like Japanese cars. Like no matter what it is, it's a yeah. rice burner, right? It's just a rice burner to him. So playing Need for Speed, I would always ask him like, Dad, which which car is the best? Like which what should I do to make it faster? And he'd be like, you know, he'd come over and like he'd be like the Ford Focus, just because it's American. And I was like, I'm not getting the Ford Focus. You know what else they had? Was that the game? Oh, oh almost went down. We need, like, a net behind you. Um, just ca- catch it. Did they have Escalades in that game? Or was that only no, in Underground 2? No, they did not have Escalades. Underground 2 had the Escalades. Mm. Favorite car. But anyway, go on. Yeah, so Underground 1, I uh, would do. I would use the RX-7 FD all the time, and I would do the drag race on that game. I don't know if they have the same drag oh, racing mode in Underground 2, but... Uh, in Underground 1, it was just, like, this long strip. You had to, like, avoid And it was, the like, a couple right? lanes, yeah. right? And you'd have to avoid the cars. Same and then at the too. end, there was a ramp. Oh. And so I would always try to hit the ramp with only two of my wheels and barrel roll the car and land it for the finish. And once I had been playing the game for, like, a year, I figured it out and I actually got it. And I would do it every time to anyone new that I was playing with. It just made me love the game and love Japanese cars. And then uh, in high school, my autos class was unreal. Um, I only took autos for one and a half years in high school and my senior year of high school, it was like a vocational class, so I could bring my own car 
work on it in the auto shop and what were you driving at the time best the class no no i had a dodge durango oh no dodge dakota my bad dodge dakota what year 2000 no 90 i don't remember it was either like early 2000 or like late okay late so i think the body style that 98 I'm of. maybe it was a 98 i think it okay. was 98 um v6 v8 oh yeah. they had the magnum v8 yeah Sweet it wee. was like a five three five they had a five four and then they a, had a five, five seven nine five nine okay so it was, so a five, it was the four. five the five okay. four okay yeah the slightly yeah. smaller one automatic yeah. Yeah, it was the, the just the two door like tragic the, the single cab, whatever those trucks. Tragic transmission. I never had problems, fortunately. Um, but yeah, I, I repainted that whole truck the summer before with my dad. Did all the That's body cool. work, got rid of all yeah. the rust, um, and then I replaced I replaced all the suspension <clears throat> in my auto shop. Jeez, oh, right let's talk about that first part right there. What the <laughs> rust? <laughs> let's not talk about the rust. Hey, I well, know how to do it. I just don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you got big plans for that Civic, but so how did you get into Hondas then? If you're you were a oh, diehard dude. Dodge boy, it was you the, grew up like I did. I, I was not truck. a diehard Dodge. I don't. I didn't like. I didn't really like American cars to be honest. I like Mustangs. I liked Mustangs. I like that. Um, you the one that I had. Yeah. Right. Oh, when you I was had younger. a Mustang. Yeah. yeah. What's that body style called? I don't remember. S S S one ninety seven. Not oh yeah, started. that's like when they like refreshed it, but it was like the retro looks and like yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was after the new edge. It went after the new edge. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I liked those when I was younger, so I ended up having one. But what really did it for me was I my first sports car I ever bought was like I was telling you earlier the um, Honda Civic Si Coupe from two thousand seven. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was an eighth gen with a K twenty. And uh, I bought it with a muffler delete. That was the only mod that had been done to it. It's just a muffler delete. And it sounded so good, and it revved to like eighty six hundred RPM. It was so slow, but the handling was so precise and just dude. The only the best way to describe that car is it's just such a good car. It's just such a good car. Because I on Friday I will be my review of that. I, they're so they're good, so dude. good, dude. They're so good. Like, you know what you're it feels be like? So happy if you get one. It kind of feels like when you're playing Forza on normal mode and you're like beating everyone. Like, you feel great, but also, you know, like, if you bumped it up, like, one more, like, <laughs> yeah, you would be trash right. again. Yeah. So you're like, it feels like it's at the top of its class, but, like, yeah. not in the next class. Yeah, no, it, like, you can't compete with, like, even WRXs no. or, like, F- Focus ST. Yeah, it's like, probably not fast, but they're, no. they're fun. Yeah, no, they're fun. It, yeah. They sound good. They're and you can boost to, them, and then they are fast. Yes, because they, they can handle quite a bit of power. Yeah, I love yeah. the crossover in that car. Yeah, it's very... uh, in the VTEC. In the, in my video, I'm like, listen for it. Listen. Like, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it's very distinct. But it's you don't su- feel much stopped. more. You just hear a lot more. Dude, yeah. I, yeah, the craziest experience I think I've ever had. Maybe not craziest, but one of the best experiences I've had riding in a car was riding my friend's S2K. I had like a full three inch straight pipe exhaust in. He uh, he's a really good driver, and he his was, was all like you know track built, and it was in it was at Tail of the Dragon. So he took me for a ride, and he's fucking going 80, 80 miles an hour down Tail of the Dragon, and I just like remember when it kicked into VTEC, I'm like, oh my god, it was so awesome. Oh, dude, it, it's so experiences fun. like that I absolutely love. Yeah, like the best sales pitch for Porsche was when they invited me up to Road America. They're like, all right, here's the Panamera GTS. When you get on the back straightaway, just hammer it. <laughs> and I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, just stay behind the pace car, but, like, he's going to be hammering it, so we got to keep up. So I was like, okay, like, I had never driven a Porsche before that. This was, like, a year and a half ago. And, dude, we got on the back straightaway, and I just put my foot into it. I'm like, this is – I have to own one of these now. Yeah. Like, if, if I had the money, which I don't, I – dude, I would have walked away with a car. I, like – I it, it's moments like that. Did you buy you cars there? Yeah, they well but they had like sign yeah it was well it was like all old people and then me and my brother <laughs> like, <laughs> like they so they're like oh like are you guys owners and we're like no, no we we're just no. invited we got an email to show up here at this time and <laughs> our so names funny. were already pre registered so we're like okay <laughs> that's awesome yeah, yeah. It was, it was, but like I love experiences like that like where it's yeah. just like you're just completely sold on a car like minute one that happened to me with the Supra the other day I think it rocks the new Supra the new Supra is awesome because it's a BMW. Yeah. It's yeah, literally a good. BMW, and Dude. I love BMWs. Yeah. I saw a new Super at the BMW shadow shop really? over there. Oh, right. I just chuckled to myself when I drove past it. <laughs> Everything. You know what I found out about the car, though? You have to pay yearly for Apple CarPlay. 
What? Yeah, BMWs are doing that now. You have to pay a monthly fee in order to keep, or not monthly, a yearly fee to keep Apple CarPlay, or else they turn it off for you. What? You have to subscribe for your yeah, car. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so stupid. It's pretty dumb. But and so the Supers of BMW, same thing. I know. Dang. I know. Getting back to it, when did you buy your EG? I uh, bought it in November of twenty. Hey. People are gonna think that their hey. computers froze. <laughs> 20. 20. 18. Really? Yeah, because I I like talked to you for the first time in January of twenty nineteen. Right? Yeah, I thought yeah. you had had it so, way before. No, I bought it in November of twenty eighteen, and I I had had the I had the Mustang previously. And I just, like, kind of realized that I didn't like that car that much. I kind of bought it to... It was just one of those cars that you buy for some for other people. So did you have the enjoy. SI before the Mustang? I had the SI, SI and then the Mustang. And then the EG. Yeah. So it was Dakota, SI... Nope. What you... Dakota, we have to Mark IV, Jetta. Oh! oh. Two, two liter, NA. Oh. oh. Manual. That's how oh. I learned stick. Oh, Okay. Bought it at a dealership with my mom in the city, middle of rush hour traffic, drove it home by myself, did not know how to drive stick. Sounds pretty rough. That's I didn't stall on the way home. I stalled, the, I, stalled in the, I stalled in the test drive, but I didn't stall on the way home. Got home, had to leave for work 10 minutes later, drove from Des Plaines to Glenview, same day. Mm-hmm. Just sent That's it. Impressive. Thank you. Uh, diamonds are made under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no. So I had the, the the Dakota Jetta. I actually had a Ford Escape before the Dakota. We're not <laughs> talking about that. Oh the wow! I mean, might have blown the motor on that one. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah you four cylinder or six? Six cylinder. Oh. So Ford Escape Dakota Jetta SI. Okay. Uh, while I owned the SI, I stored it over the winter, and I had another Dodge Dakota, a different one. It was uh, the extended. Extended cab, not the four door, but the one where it has seats in the back. Oh yeah, the jump seats or whatever. Yeah, whatever yeah. they are. Uh, I sold both of them in the spring and bought the Mustang. I drove yeah, the, the Mustang, Mustang does not seem like a very you car. I only owned it for like three or four months. Yeah. Okay. And I sold it, uh, and then I bought the EG, and bought the turbo kit. I messaged Caleb and I was like, "Yo, you want to help me boost this thing?" And he's like, "Hell yeah, brother." Uh, and then I bought my 335i. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that car. Yep. Bought, I forgot you had it, yeah. Bought the 335i. Uh, I had my friend Matt, who was my boss at the time, actually, drive the 335i out here while I drove the EG. <laughs> dropped off. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted my water back. <laughs> Are you going to keep fidgeting with it? I'll try not to. <laughs> uh, dropped off the EG. Drove home in the 335i and... Um, yeah. The rest yeah. is history. And then you recently history. got rid of it. And now you have the EK. Yeah, I sold the 335i. And now. In March. In March. Which, buying the EK That's is one right. of my favorite stories. Yeah, you just sent it to me. And I was like, well, I'll buy it right now. Well, I, no, I didn't, <laughs> no, I didn't even send it to you. I put it on my story that I had just reviewed it. And I was like, yo, is he selling that thing? I was like, whim, actually, he was. Whim, yeah. yeah, my friend Gavin, he buys and sells cars. Like it's I follow him now. I, I keep up with yeah, him. Yeah, he's a yeah. great guy. But uh, I put it up on my story because I was like, oh, just reviewed. You went out, bought the car. Oh, well, first and- I messaged you and I was like, is this for sale? And you're oh, like, yeah, yeah, he's actually selling it. And I was like, all right, I'll go buy it right now. <laughs> I was like, I'll literally go buy it right now. You, between me filming the review and the review coming out, you bought the car, and I think you lowered it and put it on wheels, too. <laughs> so by the time the review... And drove came, it to Florida and back. Yes! <laughs> yeah. before the, because usually I film my reviews like two weeks before yeah. they come out. And, uh, yeah, you had done all of that in the two weeks. And so in the video, I say, oh, thanks, Gavin, for letting me drive the EK, even though it had, like... 3,000 more miles on it was lowered and owned by John That's by the time so the video came out. Yeah. That was the fastest change for a car. And now it might and be for sale. it's for sale. Yeah. If you guys I'm, want an, a, a locally it's famous a EK Civic. Uh, it'll be for sale in the next day or two. Oh, oh really? Yeah. It might be sold by the time this comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be for sale really soon. Uh, 
I'm getting a 135i. That's awesome. It, that's still a six cylinder, right? Yeah, I'm gonna probably Ender get. Deep. I want to get the N50. Tw- I want to get the N55, which is single turbo, mm. but it's a twin scroll turbo. What the heck is a twin scroll turbo? So it's a turbo that has basically exhaust. two different channels in the exhaust side of the turbo, and it takes it's your couch to it. I don't care. <laughs> it takes the exhaust gases from half of the cylinders on one side of the the exhaust housing of the turbo, and the other half of the cylinders power the other side of the exhaust housing of the turbo. And like, there's a really, really good engineering explained video on it. I can send it to you. It, it takes time to understand. So like, yeah. when you said something you don't understand, just pause it and think about it and process it out. Just I, sit. It's like a 20 minute video, and I think I spent like an hour watching it because I was yeah. just like trying to understand what he was saying. Huh. And it's really cool, actually, how efficient they are. Why is, is it because it reduces the chamber, vacuum right. in between Pulses. the cylinders firing? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So like, one cylinder fires. Think of it as like a ball of gas it's because there's less volume for the the ball of gas to fill up is it is that no no it's just because like when one cylinder fires into one side of the turbo another cylinder fires into the other side of the turbo and there's no time where there isn't any gas flowing there's always no gas there's always gases flowing there's no gaps in the flow of the gas exactly whereas with a regular turbo there's gaps because like one cylinder fires a puff you're gonna have to watch it's kind of like a rotary where there's always something going on because there's three sides of the triangle. Sure. It's exactly how they sound, actually. Is that a 70s machine gun, or is that, is that a rotary? But yeah, well, because the Supra is a twin scroll. And I never right. know it's not a twin turbo. No, it's a single turbo, single turbo. twin scroll. It means that half of the cylinders go to one it's side of just, the exhaust like housing. And, thin and, yeah. uh, and is it through the entire thing? Or is it just at the very entrance of it? I think it's throughout the entire thing. Okay. So I didn't yeah, know that. I, yeah, I didn't so. know that either. That, that's why it requires two wastegates. Oh. oh. You're blowing my mind right now. Was that a turbo? So, like, even two no. internal, oh. internal wastegates, pretty much? I don't know how internal wastegates work. I think that's I think that's why you see cars with two wastegates, is because it's a twin scroll. So Most two wastegates. cars with two wastegates are just got so much power that they just need to evacuate more god gases. So they have two ways. So the 135 oh, has the. Oh, I, might, oh, I might be sounding like a dummy right now, but the 135i, the one that I want is that N55 motor. It ran from 2011 to 2013 in oh. the 135. Um, prior to that, you know, it's all the same gen. It's like the same yeah. gen as like the E90 generation for the 3 Series. Are you getting a hardtop? Yeah. I've only driven, the only one series I've driven was a convertible. Yeah. I would not, I didn't want no, that. No, I'm going to get the hard top. I'm going to try to get the N55 if I can find one for the right price, and it will be an automatic. Yeah. It'll be a dual clutch auto. Prior to 2011, they don't have the dual clutch. 2011, 2013, they have a dual clutch. Didn't they stop making the one series, right? Yep. In, In 2013, 2013 okay. was the last year. Yeah. I think, maybe the 1M... Ran longer? I don't think so, but maybe. Did we ever get the 1Ms here? Yeah. Later on? There are a few and far between, early ones, but yeah, but... we have 1Ms. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I think. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Maybe it was the 1M wagon we didn't get. Because there was I some, get that. There was some get that. 1M in Florida that was, like, illegally imported here. Oh, and they were trying to figure out what to do with it. But oh. I don't know. It was some probably VinWiki story I saw while half awake. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let's yeah, be honest here. Yeah, yeah. Though I like those cars. I love that size. Me too. Because um, I, one of my probably my all time favorite car, modern car, M2. is the M two competition. This. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's almost just, it's, it's like the, the body style is very comparable yeah. to the one series. It it feels like to me the size of an old E thirty. I mm-hmm. love E thirties. It is heavier, heavier, but like dimensions wise, right? Is it really I that feel, small? It's small. It's yeah, they're small. It's yeah. not big. Yeah, um, wheelbase is pretty short. Yeah, hopefully I should be filming an M4 convertible soon. Mm-hmm. And I like went to go look at it because it's a friend's car, and I'm like, this thing's massive. They're big. It's yeah. long. Yeah, it's and so you big. you reviewed the E92 M3. I saw that. Yes, review. which and actually that is a long car as well. I'm going to go see in two days again because as of this morning, he supercharged it. Classic. Love so that. I'm That's excited sick. to see that car again. That's sick. The E92 M3 was that was one of the best mid 2000s cars I've ever driven. The V8 just it revs oh. so easily. Oh, it's, it's flat. It's flat plane. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
It, it revs Did they to go what, back to a six cylinder after that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Turbo though. Yeah. That was the last NA M3, but also the only V8. V8. Yeah. It's a very unique. Yeah. yeah. It, it's very. Model. It's a four liter, I believe. And it's Already it's just so fun to drive. Flat Low displacement, rig. high revving V8s are Dude, awesome. it revs to like seven seventy five hundred, I think. I thought it revved to eight K. It might. Mm. I, I can't I drove the car two years ago. But oh my god. It one of the best. Just so much fun. The only thing is that they have rod bearing issues. Same yeah. with the V tens from that era. Yeah, you're supposed so. to change them at like a hundred thousand miles. Yeah. Or like when you're approaching hundred K. My friend Chris Such a design who, <laughs> My friend Chris <laughs> who owned it, he's like <laughs> he's like, Hey man, like he was at work, he's like, Take the car for as long as you want, do whatever. Don't move it an inch until it's fully warm. Yeah. And I was like, All right. And I was yeah. like, Why is that? And he's like, Rod bearings. And I was like, gotcha. Which well at the same time it's like if that is your only major issue in the entire design, it's a big <laughs> one. <laughs> it's a big one, but like at least it's not like, oh, you're going to get this oil leak at 40K miles, and it's going to be with you for the life of the car, unless you, like, drop the subframe and replace the... Yeah, frame. it is kind of a one you and know, done fix. Exactly. It's like you do it, and you're it's good for another 100K miles. Another 100K. Ah, nice. Hey. Dude. There's like a rotary out in the room. Let's calm down here. <laughs> that's true. you got to go true, through them. <laughs> no, that's not true, though. No, it's not I hate true. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a meme. But uh, the other thing I didn't like about that E92 M3 is uh, not the transmission itself. The transmission itself is great. There's no park. You put it in neutral and just lift the handbrake, and then you turn the car off. There's no, like, P. There's no, like, because I drove the automatic. There wasn't any, like, you don't put it in park. You just leave it in neutral and put the handbrake up, that's and weird. that's park. It's very Is odd. it a dual clutch? I don't remember. Hmm. I'm not sure. But, like, I thought that was super weird. I had to call the guy because I was, like, stopping to do the picture stuff. And I'm, like, this is a dumb question, but where's park? He's, like, oh, just leave it in neutral put the handbrake up. I thought he was just, like, telling me, like, oh, you dunce. You can't figure it out. Just do that. But, no, that's how you park it. Huh. It's very weird. It took me a while to figure out. And it feels very unnatural because you, like, put it into neutral and then, like, Natural for manual. Be manual. Yeah, it, feels, <laughs> right. it felt like I was posing. Because yeah. honestly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey. I hate when I see automatic guys lock their e brake when they park. It's like, oh, bro. I used what to about do that automatic guys that put a shift knob and a shift boot on their over their oh, shift the cover? Works. <laughs> oh my god! The, what car? Oh, the what car was it? I think it was the the BRZ has like a fake shift boot that goes over the. It's weird. Something Bro, like it's that. Like, like they put like a nice leather shift boot on a automatic, and I was like, Stop. "It's like if you're gonna drive an automatic, own it." My advice is to own it. Be yeah. comfortable with the fact that it's an automatic. Don't try to hide it. Or At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Like that exactly, much. just like if it's an automatic, yeah, it's an automatic. In high yeah, school, though, for sure, I did put the handbrake up on the G6, <sighs> and then I broke it one day. This guy, <laughs> I broke the handbrake. <laughs> I don't put handbrakes on anything because I don't have any. Work. I don't have any handbrakes. All my handbrakes don't work. <laughs> Push me to the edge. All my handbrakes are bad. <laughs> I've never owned a car with a broke. I've never owned a manual car with a not working handbrake. All my RX-7s and my Miata had working handbrakes. I've replaced parking brake cables on two cars. That really? I owned, and it is not a fun. Job. Yeah, so that's I, why I was like, all right, and it doesn't work. Putting gear. I just value having the handbrake. Yeah. So I kind of miss it, honestly. I miss that feeling of putting it in neutral. Well, and it's also like if you want to get out of the car for two seconds to yeah, do something. Yeah, that's the worst. Like, if you're <laughs> I have to turn any the kind car of off. Slope, you have to turn it off, put it in gear, and then get out. Dude. <laughs> it does or suck. just like if you're sitting on your phone, you don't have to sit with your foot on the brake. Just toss you know, I started it to do in the truck because I jammed something between the hydro and the, the console, and that worked. You are that's so <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. You went through all of the effort to put a Nissan transmission, four <laughs> liter, and a JDM Toyota engine in a chassis that was never meant to do it. You re-engineered the front suspension and the rear and the rear suspension, <laughs> and you built a new gas tank. Essentially, you raised everything up. You cut it. But you pop started at your apartment. <laughs> you won't do a starter motor. No, the starter's not bad. It's the adapter plate. You can't fix it. Oh it's just an issue. I, I just love 
you put so much effort into so much, and then you're like... It's all the little things. Eh. It's the little things, you're like, eh. Yeah, but the yeah. little things take so much time to they figure do, out. They do, and they're just, like, such a pain. I know. Life. It's like, I don't yeah, want to spend a day no putting a great cable in my car. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. And yeah. you can't really get a video out of that, because you're like, what, I yeah, fixed yeah, this I one yeah. small thing. And it, it's also, like, making the stock yeah. e-brake cable work with a Ford Axle sounds like a nightmare. Nah, no thanks. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, what, how does your hydro work? That's whole. It's, it's, it's hydraulic, hydraulic lines. It's like hence the name line. hydro. Right, but like, can't you like put like a holder in there? Yeah, you can, but it's not like I don't think you're stuck when it's like, supposed to hold it that long. Pull it, I don't know. Pull it back and then shove something. That's under. what I do, and that's what oh. it's giving me shit for. Oh, that is what happens. I literally sure. like I pull it back and I shove like one of these. And you're still dumb. It. You're still dumb. Yeah. I don't give you any points for that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's it's little stuff like that. I mean. It is what it is. Yeah. Yes. It's those little things. Getting a car dialed like that is also the most rewarding, though. Like when I when the truck was finished, even when I had this all the fancy stuff, it kind of sucked to drive. But then dialing it all in was now it's yeah. awesome. I have yeah. to pee. Okay. You can go pee. All right. We'll we'll, we'll carry the reins here. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Hell uh. yeah. So what's new in the gingium world? Ah. Hey. <laughs> Nothing much, man. Oh, you're just kind of coasting right now, I feel like, but before you start. The, it's the calm before the storm. I mean, Molly was, like. Molly was a storm, kind of. No, it wasn't. I was over here, and you're like, hey, I got the motor out. I came over like a week later. Oh, okay, like, yeah, it didn't take very long, but it, it wasn't like a boring part. That's fair. But yeah, that's the next big project. I don't think it'll be easy compared to all the other Yeah, ones. we're looking at the Volvo parked outside. Yeah. Which have you even announced yet? Kind of. Like, it's been in a video, but I have not announced what I was going to do to it yet. You've had that car almost a year. I know. I reviewed it January. Yeah. It's the longest I've had a car about, like, doing something crazy to it. And you still daily it? Yeah, it broke, and then it fixed itself. That That's what I love about old cars, man. <laughs> no, dude. It was parked, and then I went to drive it one day, and it just misfired and shut off all the time. So I was like... That's what my Miata did, and, and then I, was I barely like, fixed All right, all right, fuck it. I and did then, plugs and wires, never again. Oh, I didn't do anything. I was going to do a distributor, because that's what it was supposed to be. Yeah. But they're like 200 bucks, even off like Rock yeah. Auto. So I was like, nah, I'm just going to put a new engine in it. <laughs> but then I drove it the other day to get rollers, and it was fine, so now I've been driving it. Was it on a rainy day? That it started misfiring? Yeah. No. Okay. So my truck had a crack in the distributor cap, and whenever it would rain, it would fill with condensation and not start or misfire or whatever. So it never happened when it was like fine outside right. but as soon as it rained it would misfire and we had to like do a bunch of crap to it but i think what it was is actually so when it was doing the thing i, I popped the hood and I, one of the distributor plugs was loose like i okay. popped it in but it didn't fix it right away like i tried driving it after that and it was still doing weird stuff huh. but maybe that was the issue and it just took a while for it to figure itself out i don't know but it's working now so i'm, I'm doing it it's such a slow and boring works. car but it's it's Kind of I love cars like that though. They, they're so well built. I just like I sit in there and I drive like this. I'm just like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> you should you I'm should kinda, almost just slam it. it on stock everything. No, that'd be kind of funny. No, I'm gonna keep it stock suspension with, even with like the LS. Not not suspension, stock height. Okay, stock height. Yes, please do yes. something. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, what's up? <laughs> um, and please do. Is he working on his car? He's, wor he's literally working on his car. John just ditched his own podcast. <laughs> we set this up. He texted me. He's like, hey, I want to come on your podcast. I said, yes, of course. You're one of my good friends. That's greasy. He's calling That's... me greasy for not doing a handbrake. That's straight. That is all grease right there. <laughs> oh, man. So are we going to get him or are we going to keep talking or are we going to end it? I don't what know. Do? I, I'm just going to yell to him. All right. See, what, see what's up. If he doesn't want to come back, then. I got a bow over there. We can shoot him. Hey! I thought you were in the bathroom. I'm coming back right now. He's coming back. That's what he says. It is. This kid, when he all has, right, sorry, when he has I, something uh, in I, his head, I, I, no, I don't blame him, man. When he has something in his head, he can't get it out until he does it exactly with with the thumbnail. Whoa, whoa! There's a fight yeah, going on off camera. Are you? No, leaving? it's on camera. Ah! Can't, wait, Kale. Where do you go? Where's he going? Are you leaving? Oh my god. Oh my god. Ugh. 
Dude, I swear, you get something in your head and you have to go figure it out. Were you just peeing and you're like, I have to figure it out if it's an M10? Yeah. I mean, I, I respect the hustle, for sure. Yeah. It's Thanks. just, I well, like, now listening to the whole thumbnail story we talked about for 40 minutes, it's like, once you get something in your head, it's locked in there. I'm, I'm not going to ever be mean to you, because I feel like you're going to, like, take it home with you, you know? I do. I, I do internalize you? things. Oh, yeah. Oh, I do. Very quickly, I do a thousand percent. There's still YouTube comments that I think I don't, about every once uh, in a while. I don't really care yeah. about the YouTube comments. So that doesn't bother me Dude, at all. Dude, three cause... weeks ago, someone commented on my uh, Audi Q7 video, Fat Man. That's it. That's all they said. I still think about it. It's three weeks later. Dude, here's what you should be thinking about, in my opinion. That person took time to comment on your video, which it might have been a negative comment, but that helps you in the algorithm no matter what it is. It doesn't true. matter what they typed. And this is for all eight of you guys watching. If you really want to hurt someone on Please, YouTube... it's an hour and it's about six people now. <laughs> if you really want to hurt someone on YouTube... Don't dislike their video, don't like their video, don't comment on their video, don't share their video. Don't just, even watch just it. Just click off. Just If you really are having a problem with what you're watching, the worst that you can do to someone who posted that video is just stop watching it. Just click off, turn it off, don't dislike. You dislike it, you help that person, believe it or not. Yeah. That helps in the algorithm. That's engagement. Well, I, I think about like uh, <laughs> Justin Bieber's baby music video, mm -hmm. most dis one of the most disliked videos in the world. Mm-hmm. I heard it was the most disliked video. I went and watched it. I gave it a dislike as well, but they got a view out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, like things like that sort of actually help. Yeah, don't, no, don't, don't engage with it at all. The thing that bothered me so much was that the guy put in the effort to comment that, but not enough to comment an entire sentence. It was just this really <laughs> funny middle ground where it was just like he just spat these two words, where it was like half, <laughs> like he gave some effort, but not enough effort to be coherent. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's actually so funny. It was just like I was just like it didn't it didn't actually bother me. Like hate yeah, comments yeah, yeah. don't actually bother me, but I do think about them because I'm like, why? Like, I do you have the notifications on on your phone when you get a comment? Uh, only if someone replies to me. Okay, okay, because I have mine completely turned off because I'm like I oh. can't I can't okay. be staring at this all the time. Yeah, so I've been doing this fun thing lately, where. As I reply to comments for the first like hour or two after upload. Yeah. And every every comment Can you be louder <laughs> with the door guy? Every comment that I can possibly do it to for the first hour or two. Yeah. I set them up to have to come back to respond to whatever I reply with. So it's a question. It'll be like on the first drive video, like, oh, which skit was your... Someone will be like, great video. And I'll reply, which skit was your favorite? And they'll come back and write me a paragraph about why that skit was their favorite. That's more engagement. Then someone else scrolling sees, oh, this comment has multiple replies. I want to see what they're talking about. Clicks it, joins in on the conversation. Dude, this is more some, engagement. like, psychology more stuff engagement. It really is. Yeah. I mean, like... You're really like manipulating people to. A lot of this is because of the social. But it's also not. I, 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 don't yeah, I don't want manipulation know. to sound bad, because you're not like getting no. people to do things you don't. Like, you know, yeah, and no, it's and it's like an honest question too. It's like while I'm asking you that, it's not solely for the purpose of trying to get you to come back and right. give me more engagement. It's also, I genuinely want to know which one you thought was the funniest. Like, yeah. people love yours, dude. You like, I got so many comments that was like, "Lawnmower guy stole the show." Dude, I, lawnmower I, guy, I hope lawnmower to make guy. Shooting your video was one of the more fun times I've had in video production in a while. Dang, that was cool. a lot of fun. It it was fun just to be the the four of us plus your brother, mm -hmm. and just like hanging out, sharing ideas, trying to figure stuff out. What are you trying to build a cardboard fort over there? I'm trying to find my kid, my my freaking uh, hand joints for John. But oh, where are yet they? again they poofed, dude. You gotta find them, man. I know. Are they expensive? Uh, no, I mean, Menards has them, but you would rather I don't want to have to go all the way to Menards, Well, too. also, Menards' hard joints are Menards' hard joints, oh. and this is on your car, so you want to use Summit Racing hard joints. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah, it. where do we find those? <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm working on that, bud. <laughs> it's in a white box. I mean, white, I, I remember throwing away a white box, and I thought it was this white box, but this white box still exists. So I'm a little worried I Look inside away. that box. No, it's, it's, it's no, trust me. No, okay. open, open the box. It. Open I the box. Did. What's in the box? Just bolts. I thought I threw this away. Just okay. bolts. So I'm a little worried I threw away the right white box, you know? Well, just bolts. 
Just wings. What has happened to this podcast? Yeah, all right, sorry. I'm I mean, all... you're chugging milk. You're looking for joints. You come back on, or you, you, you're done. I'm looking for joints. <laughs> no, where are the joints, dude? No, but I think, getting back to it, filming that video with you was a lot of fun. I, I felt like we were all actually collaborating, which I feel like is a rare feeling, because normally someone has a solid idea, and then we either go with it or don't. I, 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 that was a lot of fun. We did a good job improvising that day because we kind of got um, yeah. police officers <laughs> earlier in the day than expected. Yeah, we, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that... Uh, but we did a good job improvising. I sent you we the picture, right? I have a picture of the police car at your house. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's right office. behind my Miata. Oh, Rest funny. in peace. But, uh, yeah, no, that was a lot of fun. It was me, you, Pasha, Caleb, and, and your brother Josh, yeah. who's yeah. an incredible filmmaker. I mean, really he, good he's stuff. He's really good, dude. He, um, he's really good at what he does. And when you're like, oh, you know, my brother's going to film it, I, I don't know why I pictured like a 10 or 11-year-old like with a little handy cam, and I was like, all right, this is going to be an interesting video, but no, your brother's like really, really good. No, he's professional about it. He, he's really professional. What, what's his Instagram handle? Josh Knoll. Josh Knoll, baby. Josh Knoll. Love it. Yep. Uh, and he just recently left for that bike trip. Um, and he's, he's going to be documenting the bike trip. Yeah. Uh, he's been doing it on his Instagram and also on YouTube, which is also just Josh Noel on YouTube. Um, and they're, they're actually, I don't know if, uh, I don't think he told us about this on that, on that day, but he's, uh, raising the group together is raising $20,000 for a organization in Chicago called Chicago Rose Food. Okay. Um, and they're trying to raise 20000 biking from canada to mexico so everywhere they stop you know a lot of the times they're just stopping at like people's farms or like you know someone who's offering them a a bed to sleep in uh and they're like taking donations the whole way that's awesome that's awesome i I, he mentioned the the canada to mexico part but Mm -hmm. i didn't know quite what it was for that's really really i mean they're doing it just to do it but they figured if they were going to do something of this magnitude they might as well use it to create something even better yeah yeah so yes yeah. yeah. So the video that we're talking about, getting back to it, was your what? What's the name of the video? What did you end the, up calling the it? first drive video? Yeah. <clears throat> Called it ripping the four hundred horsepower. I'll I'll link it at the end of the video if you're watching the video version on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, whatever, um, head on over to YouTube, um, and, and definitely check that out. Ripping the four hundred horsepower Civic on the streets. Parentheses first drive. Yeah. So it was like a very another thing I've been trying to do lately, and I'm I'm consciously trying to do this is underselling the video and then over delivering. Interesting. So, for instance, on this one, it's ripping the Civic on the streets, and yeah. like people click on it thinking it's just going to be like a typical first drive video, but no, it's like a fully written skit. Yeah, video. I mean that the was thing is two written. two days of filming. Yeah, I mean yeah. which is like. I, I don't know of any other time besides the 24-hour Miata challenge I completely flopped yeah. um, that we've spent two days filming yeah. something. Another example is like the most recent video is me going back to Mike's Dino and making more power yeah. and then Caleb and Pasha drive it. I put nothing in the title or description or uh, thumbnail about Jinjium or just Pasha driving yeah. my car. That would be like overselling, you know? So I didn't put any of that in there because I wanted to undersell and then when they see that video, they're like, oh, dude, that's Gingium. They're yeah, like, oh, yeah. my God, Gingium's in this video. They're like, oh, my God, that's yeah. Gingium. So it's like, You're not going selling. in the title of this video, by the way. <laughs> oh, it's already up. The video's already up. No, I mean, this this podcast video. Oh, oh, oh. You're yeah. going to undersell it. Maybe. Yeah, I know. You're going to undersell yeah. it. And then Gingium's going to make And under cameo. deliver as well. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> see, that's, oh, where, God. that's where I come in. You under undersell but over deliver i try to i try to. i, I, I undersell this, under but... deliver and just cry under my sheets that's uh, that's my process no dude no <laughs> no you do a no. good job zach um, you're good at what you do thank you i was fishing for compliments <gasps> but... <laughs> the box the heim joint box all right Sorry. The joint I was, box. I was stressing Can about. I, see him? I was stressing about. No, I'm gonna show them. I want to look at them. Well, they're mine. Oh my eye. Do you need a knife? No, this is going on. Knife. It might oh. be one of our longest podcasts, and I'm so hyped over that. I'm you channeling my Joe Rogan. Oh. Wait, what are we looking? Heim at? joints. They're greasable heim joints. Are they already? Are they pre-greased? Uh, they feel greasy. No, technically. Yeah. So. So what's the point of this? Why don't we just like cut off the threads and weld it straight to the current arm? 
We're gonna try to. Hey, here's your not fidget spinner, because this is a very strange little part. So we're gonna try to drill and retap or something, or weld the nut to your arm, mm -hmm. so we can actually adjust this in and out. And stuff so too. what am I? Right. What? Do, but we'll, we what, can. Do you have time to do this, this today? Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's it's a, a joint. It's so a joint. instead of like a rubber going? bushing and yeah. stuff. Well, you know that bushing we were grinding off his car? Oh, yeah, well, that's yeah. That's like a big rubber bushing. So this is a much lower profile. Yeah. So I much think. smaller. So is it, it so looks, much smaller? It looks like it. It right. looks like it. They're pretty me. small. Um, so this will hopefully make it so it's not... So it doesn't rub. Yeah. yeah, I can just run the five mil spacers. And, and you can adjust it then really easily. True. And get some mad camber if you wanted to, but I don't think you really do. So Mad rear camber? Oh, yeah. On a front wheel drive Civic, oh, it already yeah. has yes, like sir. an aggressive front camber. I could do. Some you know, what? we should start the trend of positive camber. Spaceship. Well, I was gonna say if he did positive <laughs> camber on those tires, he could go for another two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you just yeah, you just flip them the other way. Yeah, yeah, just flip the tires, dude. Yeah, just flip the tires. Yeah, just flip the tires. Yeah, easy peasy. Yeah, easy peasy. <laughs> So dude, these are so entertaining. See, dude, this and is a fidget toy in Caleb, itself. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying, Caleb, they're so quiet. Next time I have you on the podcast, so I'm gonna give you two joints. of those, so you can like sit there and fidget. Uh, yo, low, low yo, look, 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 low look, battery. Look, it's look, okay. Look, 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 look. Hey. I was trying to do that. My fingers aren't long enough. <sighs> oh really? Yeah, it hits. Wait, oh, wait, let me try it. Let me try it. Let me try it. Nice. All right. Uh, oh, I can do it. I'm ready to work on this. All right, let's do it. Let's end this podcast. Thanks for it. coming on, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. This was a long time. I know. We've been trying to do this. So it's fun. I think that I had a th less than a thousand subs when hundred percent when you, you first 15, started 000. when you started hitting me up about it. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. Yeah. I think you know what? I think the first time. How we many talked subs about did you meet? When did you have when we met? Like a thousand. Really? That's yeah. Crazy. I think I had, I had I had a little over a thousand. I had like twelve hundred. I think probably. I had like six thousand when I met you. You had like two forty, maybe. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. That's you crazy because you're at what five? Yeah, what? Oh jeez. Yeah, like five at? five fifteen. Like that. That's nuts. I can't wait to hang out in like ten years. We all have Bugattis. Uh, <laughs> <Mission> Derby. Nah. <laughs> is that not your guys' ten year plan? Is to have Bugattis, Bugattis and Demolition yeah. Derby? Yeah, dude, let's uh, do I could it. Probably squeeze it in, you know. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I'd have to obviously take time off my mega yacht, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's fine. We'll just have it on the mega yacht. Oh, yeah. It's oh, going to be yeah, big yeah, enough for a There's right enough room. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. so, yeah, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> you big dumb idiot. We'll be out in the middle of the Atlantic, so then there's, you know, international waters, no laws. Yeah, no laws. Just, yeah, dude. And then yeah. we could kill each other. Yeah, right I'm going to kiss you. Right? Hell yeah. <laughs> what? What's going to happen? You're going to kill us? Is that what you, that's what he said. I might, yeah, we could easily kill each I'll other. I'll promise right you here. one thing. I'll either kiss you or kill you. One of two will happen, and I can guarantee that. All right, let's end this. And this podcast, thank you so much for watching. Uh, John, where, the, where can they find all your stuff? Oh, uh, is this like at the end of Hot Ones when it's like... YouTube.com forward slash Gingium. Hey, shut up. Dude, this John, camera's like this camera, this camera, or this microphone. Tell people what you got. You gonna be a stance boy, John? Just about. Just about, actually, yeah. <laughs> Your headlamp is so funny! <laughs> 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 <laughs>